Hi my troublesomes, it's Miracle and welcome back to my Deva Miracle. <laughs> I'm so happy you guys decided to join me today and as it is guys, if I seem a little bit irritated or on edge, it's because it is the hardest thing in the world to film while your family is home. I've literally retried this intro at least six times because I keep hearing everyone making all this additional noise. So <laughs> I do apologize if I just seem a little bit off. It's just like, please stop making all this noise. We're all, we're here, we're out here and we're minding other people's business. So honey, get ready, get your hot cocoa and get your comfort pillow. I don't have one, actually I do, okay, got one. And <laughs> comfort pillow, you're back in our room, all nice and cozy, looking extra un un um, unattractive. So we're starting this one off today with Jeffree Star. As it were, he goes over what is going on with the fulfillment of everyone's orders from Black Friday and Thanksgiving. If you watched my previous video, I go over that in Jeffree Star's interview with Trisha Paytas. Uh, he goes over what's going on with the shipments and the fulfillment orders. He's saying that his staff and all are working around the clock to make sure all of these orders and transactions get out in a timely manner. Earlier this week, Jeffree Star Cosmetics also ended up issuing out an email saying that all orders placed on Thanksgiving and on Black Friday would be sent out and shipped by December the 19th. Within that email, it also goes over that the orders that followed thereafter would be seen as less of a priority and there is no guarantee for those to reach to you at your door by Christmas. Today being December 19th, a lot of people are a little bit anxious because they have not been receiving their confirmation email saying that their shipment is on the way. Jeffree Star actually ends up sending out a statement on his Snapchat and his Instagram, and this is the video as follows. Hello everybody, what's up? I know a lot of you that ordered on Black Friday are waiting for an update. So bitch, it's time to be fully transparent. So after, first of all, currently we only have, thank God we are reaching the finish line. We have shipped 90% of all orders placed on Black Friday and the day after. There is sadly 10% remaining. Now you guys, we have been pulling Saturday ships, Sunday ships. Um, remember, I'm not Amazon. We have had crazy growing pains and I know that there's a lot of people like, girl, go buy more warehouses and fill it with more people. It's the holiday time. Obviously you guys know, I wish I could snap a finger and have everything move quicker. Sadly, there's just not enough resources and people available. Um, but doesn't mean we're not pumping out thousands and thousands of orders every day. We have just never experienced this amount of growth as a company. So in 2020, will there be the in 2020? Of course, we will not be having these issues. But as the end of the year hit and after the Shane launch and then Black Friday, you guys really broke our whole entire company. Um, and it's insane and I can't believe it. And it's so beautiful, but we are fully having growing pains. Um, the manpower, the warehouses. Now we do have a new warehouse opening next year in a month and a half. It's an extra 30,000 square feet, but I know everyone wants their shit now. And I'm so sorry um, to the 10% um, that is left. They will be shipped out, of course, by the next day or two. But with the post office and how many packages they're getting, it may, of course, not get there by Christmas. So I'm so sorry. I feel sick. Like I feel fucking sick to my stomach. Um, people obviously you guys know i fucking live and breathe this brand so for anyone out there that is upset i'm so sorry i've never experienced this amount of growth before and i keep saying that because i just want you guys to know that literally every single staff member in this building any employee that works for jeffree star cosmetics is shipping orders today and doing customer service so i don't even care if you're in the wholesale department if you're in the art department you guys literally we have all hands on deck um a lot of people don't want to be on camera but i'm going to walk through the building you guys like everyone is shipping and working so hard and i'm so sorry um that we are not doing a better job there is literally no resources that's why i keep saying that it's not an excuse it's just fucking um <laughs> it's insane it's really insane so we're gonna go in the warehouse for a minute um but you guys we're reaching the finish line all right, the last mystery boxes from Black Friday are officially going out today. We have a tiny stack left there. We have all hands on deck, you guys. People are shipping around the motherfucking clock, you guys. We have 6 a.m. to midnight every single day. 
Yes, warehouse. Hi, Freddie. Hey, how you doing? We're just doing a little warehouse tour. You guys, we have all hands on deck. There are so many people working. We spoke about Trisha Paytas earlier in this conversation when mentioning Jeffree Star, but as it is, Trisha has her own thing going on. Earlier today, Shane Dawson drops a lovely little caption when referencing Trisha Paytas and about how happy he is that she is happy and knowing what it is to be truly loved by the people that she's surrounded by. It's a wonderful thing that the people around her love her so much because she is not making any fans right now. This hot cocoa is boiling over. Over, guys because as it is right now there is a small youtuber that goes under the username hot tea that is putting Trisha under fire Kriana the owner of the channel hot tea ends up releasing two videos within the last three days revolving around Trisha Paytas around December 5th 6th 7th around that time <laughs> Rihanna ends up making a video about signing up for Trisha Paytas patreon accounts she decides within browsing through all of the choices that she was going to opt to sign up for the $500 tier on Trisha's Patreon. Her payment of $500 would also end up allowing her to receive a special shout out from Trisha's Instagram. And yeah, as it stands guys, let's talk about the numbers. Priyana or Hot Tea, her Instagram account stands at 1,628 followers. And her YouTube channel stands at a very impressive 63.2K subscribers. Hot Tea's numbers are pretty impressive to the average person, but they dwarf in comparison to Trisha's nearly 5 million YouTube subscribers and her 2.4 million followers on Instagram. I ended up actually getting the $500 tier from Trisha's Patreon, which I got a while ago. I got it at the beginning of December, like December 5th or 6th. I don't know. I'll have all the receipts up. On um, Patreon, it says that if you get this tier, you have to message Trisha on Patreon in order to get like your shout out, explain what you want the shout out to include. So I messaged her on December 7th to December 15th. So it's been over a week. And I said, hey, first off, I just want to say I'm a big fan of your videos. I just got the Instagram shout out tier. I have a small tea channel on YouTube where I summarize a lot of the YouTube drama. It's called Hot Tea. I was wondering if you could post a video of yourself on your story shouting it out and telling people to check it out. This is the link to my channel and then I linked it. So my concern with getting this tier was that I figured that she knew about my channel and she thinks that I'm a hater channel, but no, as I said, I love her. Um, <laughs> so, you know, my concern was that she would see my request and not want to do it and refund me my $500. And I was like, okay, so you know, as long as I get my $500 back. But she literally just ignored me. I mean, it doesn't like technically state a timeline, but to be honest, I don't think she's gonna do it. And <laughs> honestly, I don't think there's anything I can do about it. Cause I can't like contact Patreon and being like, make sure she's giving me an Instagram shout out or like refund my fucking dollars. You know what I mean? So I think, I think I'm out 500 US dollars. <laughs> releasing this information over to her fans, a lot of them ended up taking it quite personally and ended up fighting this out in her defense by reaching out to bigger names. Some names are familiar such as Spill Sesh and King Star. They end up calling Trisha out and shortly thereafter her sister ends up getting involved and this is what Hot Tea ended up saying followed. Really, really bad news. <laughs> The good news is that you guys literally messaged her so much telling her to refund me. And so Trisha's sister Callie replied saying, Good morning, Rihanna. This is Callie, Trisha's sister, and I help her out with her Patreon. Wholeheartedly, I am so sorry for not reaching out sooner. 100% my fault. I feel terrible. You did not have a good experience because it was my mistake, not Trisha's. You definitely want to make this right. So $501 has been refunded to you and will show up in about five to seven business days. So... That's good. I thought we ended on a good note because like, you know, we were just being nice to each other and I thought it ended right there. Like, to be honest, I, I was going to create an update video. And I get a notification for a copyright strike on a video that I posted like a month ago, which, you know, was kind of petty and uncalled for, not going to lie. <laughs> but 
Also not really, because I kind of had it coming. I had a lot of videos on Trisha. I was so sad. Like I was more sad about the copyright strike than I was about the $500 initially. The copyright strike will get removed from my record um, on the 17th of March. So I was like, I'll just wait it out, you know, eat it down. But then <laughs> I woke up this morning to another copyright strike. The first video that got striked was why Trisha Paytas doesn't trust Gabby Hanna. And then the one that caught copyright strike this morning was Trisha Paytas apologizes for inappropriate TikTok. <sighs> so yeah, now I have two copyright strikes on my record in a matter of 24 hours. And my channel is at risk of getting deleted. Honey, opinion time, opinion time. This is what we were waiting for. So as it is, Let's talk about Jeffrey, okay? I'm going to keep the statement that I said yesterday. I wanted Jeffrey to release information to those who purchased from him. He did release this information for that. I am pleased. However, I'm not pleased with the timing necessarily. I would have preferred that he release this information sooner. He's doing something that is much better than a lot of other business owners. I will say that he is more involved than a lot of CEOs regarding this sort of thing. Um, because listen, I've ordered things from other companies before and they didn't tell me like things went out of stock and they were just like, oh, uh, here's a refund like the day I was expecting it and it was terrible. But I had wished that he had anticipated this 10% worth of product not being released today for the people who were really anticipating and may not receive their items because as it is, they don't have enough time to request a refund and they don't have enough time to end up looking for another gift. So a lot of people were relying on this stuff to be their Christmas gifts and now they have to run around like a chicken without a head looking for things and I don't think that's fair to them necessarily. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter earlier this week saying, hey, I didn't receive my stuff. They were reaching out to customer service asking for a refund to cancel their order. A lot of them have been successful. I don't know what's going on with the, the other greater majority, but I don't know. I, I have mixed reviews because, you know, Jeffrey, he's running a business and he's going above and beyond in a lot of ways, but I also think that it's proper, um, just proper practice to understanding what workload is reasonable for the amount of employ employees that you have and therefore keep keep in mind that it's completely necessary for you to just assign somebody to release um, more frequent updates for your consumers but let's talk about Trisha okay because this part bothered me so what did you guys think about this I want you to pause this and just type I want I just want you to type your feelings just type them because I just want to read them in the true essence of the irritation that you felt towards this situation at hand okay so baby girl Rayhana, Rayhana, she did talk about how her video actually included a lot of content, about 30 videos worth of Trisha related content. Um, a lot of them picked fun at her, but ultimately she said that they were made in jest and that she is a huge fan of Trisha Paytas. That being said, I find it mighty interesting that this young lady, she has been making content for a hot minute. I, I always I always look at somebody from a bigger platform. Um, I understand if somebody's saying something hateful about you or if somebody is being uh, or spreading misinformation about you, but in this case, that's not what she was doing. Why are you attacking smaller channels? I don't understand why you're retaliating in this way in order to harm her channel. Like she, Obviously, she's taken a lot of time to build up her channel. Obviously, this, this these videos have been up for quite some time. It's unfortunate because she is a content creator. She she ends up making this, this sort of content um, that, I don't know, it ends up being a risk that a lot of people end up having to take because when your content revolves around what's going on, the issues within the beauty community or just in real life, you have a lot of people that feel embittered about the fact that someone could potentially be... Um, I don't know, it just seems really petty. It seems really petty. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think that Trisha was wrong for doing this? Do you understand where she's coming from? Do you think it's wrong for commentary channels or drama channels to create this sort of content that may potentially cause um, harm to their own personal channels? I wanna hear from you guys. You guys would probably be able to give more insight. I'm disappointed in this actually because it, this really shows how dangerous YouTube is 
um, especially for smaller channels, especially shows how there is a hierarchy even though it's not supposed to be this way. It really goes to show you that ultimately somebody with a bigger following could really snuff out smaller channels all because they're butthurt about something that wasn't even harmful. Over $500 for something that she didn't even receive. Because that's what it boils down to. She paid for a service that she did not receive and all she was asking for is a refund. She was being blatantly ignored and Trisha has people to look over that stuff. It's mighty, mighty, mighty convenient that this happens after this girl posts this video and none of her other content, all 30 or so of her videos, never caused anybody to get upset. Guys, that's all I have to say for now. So if you guys have not already, hit that subscribe button, like this video, share it with your friends if you want to, share it with me, just send it back to me so I can just watch myself like a psychopath <laughs> and then tell me what you think about this down below if you guys are wondering why I always wear these head scarves or wigs it's because exactly what you're thinking I am bald-headed I am I'm growing my hair out it's in that ugly stage if you guys want to hear about my hair transition story let me know but I don't really think that many people are really that interested in knowing about my bald-headed self so uh, we're gonna move on <laughs> but in any case I love you guys so so much thank you for your continual support and I'll see you guys next time I love you bye